so for coolant, I label it with blue tape and I say coolant only. I write that all the way around the perimeter of the bucket and I put it on the lid right there. Always twist it first to break the seal and then pull. And there's our lower radiator hose. I'm lifting up with my thumb and then sliding out. Boom, like that. It should slide straight up without a problem. Okay, next on the list is the intake. That's pretty straightforward. Most of these WRX engines have a mass airflow sensor, so that's the first thing you'll have to disconnect. The harness plug for the mass airflow sensor. I'll show you guys that right now. Okay, here's a mass airflow sensor on these Subaru engines, and here's the harness plug I was talking about. To disconnect this plug, you're gonna push down on this little tang, and that's gonna release a clip inside so you can pull the plug straight off. Let's see if I can do that right now. Here's a close-up view. Okay, and the mass airflow sensor is disconnected. Put that plug aside and make sure it doesn't get damaged when we pull the engine. Since this car doesn't have the factory air box, the only other thing I need to disconnect are these hose clamps. Now I can either disconnect it here at the turbo inlet, or I can disconnect it here. I'm gonna disconnect all the way over here at the turbo inlet. That way I've cleared a little bit more hardware off this engine and I have a little bit more room to work with when I pull this engine. Again, this is an aftermarket serrated hose clamp, so it'll be an eight millimeter. If you have an eight millimeter nut driver, this is the perfect time to use it. And just work that sucker off. You should be able to take your intake off. Boom. All right, and the intake is off. Let's go stash this with all the other parts. And we'll clean it before I put it back on the engine. Okay, that's the intake. Next is the top mount intercooler and the pitch stop. Okay, finally something interesting, the top mount intercooler. Being familiar how to swap out your top mount intercooler is a really nice thing to know if you own a turbo Subaru. I'm gonna walk you guys through the steps that I use to pull these top mount intercoolers really quickly and really easily. I've actually put five steps here on the board. Basically, we're gonna start with removing the PCV hoses. And what I'm referring to are these hoses here on the side. You're gonna pop both these hoses off, but leave this metal pipe bolted to the intercooler. And then on the driver's side, you'll pop the hose off here. And again, you'll leave this pipe bolted to the intercooler. Number two is a diverter reset valve. And that's this component right here, otherwise known as your blow off valve. What you want to do is unbolt this diverter valve from your top mount intercooler. In other words, take this bolt out and this bolt out and leave all the hoses attached to it. All you're going to do is take those two bolts out. That way you can slide the top mount intercooler out and leave the diverter in place. Number three is the throttle body. That's right here. And again, that's an eight millimeter size. We'll unscrew both of these hose clamps. Next, number four is your wide pipe inlet. And that's located underneath your top mount intercooler right here where it connects to your turbo. You're gonna disconnect that hose clamp right there and you can remove the top mount intercooler with that lower Y pipe attached to it. Number five is the support mount bolts. And those are the bolts that be located here on the sides of the intercooler. One on the driver's side, and over here, one on the passenger side. Take both of those bolts out. And that's the last step you need to do before you're ready to pull this top mount intercooler out of the car. Okay, the first step is remove these PCV hoses. Sometimes they get stuck on there pretty good. So I like to use a big screwdriver. That way you can get a little leverage on that sucker and pop them off. Okay, next is unbolting the recirculation valve from the top mount intercooler. Now, like I said, just unbolt that recirculation valve or that blow off valve from your top mount intercooler but don't unbolt or disconnect any of the hoses that go to that recirculation valve. Leave those all connected for right now. The next step is loosening the hose clamps from that throttle body. And then get down in here and remove that hose clamp from that Y pipe that's attached to the turbo outlet. And last, remove the support mount bolts that are located on the sides of that top mount intercooler. One on the driver's side and one on the passenger's side. Now that we have this top mount intercooler fully disconnected, we can pull it out. Okay, now as I pull this top mount intercooler out, keep an eye on two locations, right here at the throttle body and down here where that Y pipe connects to your turbo. It's gonna be a two-step process where I wiggle the turbo away from the throttle body coupler and then move the turbo to the driver's side so I can slip the Y coupler off that turbo. Okay, wiggle away from the engine. And right now as it's starting to break away, you can already see the separation that's taking place with that throttle body coupler 
So continue to work it back. Now you can see that it's completely separated from the throttle body coupler and we'll focus down here where that Y pipe connects to the turbo. So continue to slide it and wiggle it at the same time. Once you have that Y pipe disconnected from the turbo, you should be good to pull that top mount intercooler completely out of the engine bay. And it looks like we got a little bit of oil in that sucker. Another reason why I need to look closely at getting a high quality air oil separator on this engine ASAP. Okay, now that we have the top mount intercooler off of the car, we can take a closer look at the condition it's in. Anytime that you're gonna evaluate the condition of a top mount intercooler, one of the most important things that you'll be looking at is the condition of all those little fins that the air passes over. You wanna take a close look at all these little fins. What you're mostly looking for are little areas like this where the fins are bent over and it'll create obstruction to airflow. Essentially, the whole point of these top mount intercoolers is to allow air to pass through the top mount intercooler so that it can pull heat out of those fins. That's the primary function of these top mount intercoolers. It's a heat exchanger. There's an incoming charge that has a lot of heat in it and cold air that comes in through your hood scoop passes over the outside of these fins and the heat that gets generated by the turbo from compressing that air transfers through those fins into the ambient air and then passes out underneath the car and into the environment. So that's the primary function of an intercooler and it's the reason that you upgrade your intercooler because you want to provide better heat transfer from that incoming air charge to the surrounding ambient air. And a larger or more efficiently designed intercooler will allow you to do that. And when you pull more heat out of your incoming air charge, the temperature will be lower and lower air has a denser charge, which means more horsepower and it means better knock control. So upgrading your intercooler can actually make more horsepower and it can help prevent knock and detonation that are major engine killers in these Subaru motors. So think about upgrading that top mount intercooler. It's a great investment and it's well worth the time. All right, and the last piece of this step is a pitch stop. Let's get that sucker off and we'll wrap up step five. Okay, now here's your pitch stop. It's located on the back of your engine underneath your top mount intercooler. You're gonna need to remove this or at a minimum disconnect it because this bracket is gonna prevent you from raising the engine and transmission. You have two options. You can either take out that bolt and slip it out of this bracket and put it aside, or you can take this pitch stop out completely. I'm gonna take it out completely because I'm likely gonna replace this pitch stop with a group N or an aftermarket design. These should be 14 millimeter nuts and bolts. All right, and this pitch stop is out. Now that I have it out, we can actually take a closer look at the design. As you'll see, they have steel inserts right here where the bolts go through, but then around that steel insert, there's actually a big rubber section that provides a lot of flex in these braces. The aftermarket designs and the group end design replaces this soft rubber with something stiffer like polygraphite or even a full solid billet design. And with that, we get to knock another one off the list. The intake, top mount intercooler, and pitch stop. We are done with that step. All right, the next step will be the fuel lines and the vacuum hoses. No more radiator. That gives us a hell of a lot more room in front of the engine. No more top mount intercooler or pitch stop. That gives us a hell of a lot more room behind the engine. And on the driver's side, no more battery or windshield washer reservoir. So we're starting to really open up the space and gain access to those rear transmission bell housing bolts. They're gonna be the first thing we need to start loosening to get this engine out. All right guys, we are making great progress, but I have to wrap it up there for today. Thank you so much for checking out the video. In the next video, we're gonna be moving on to the fuel lines and how we disconnect these fuel lines. I've actually modified a common parts stored tool that allows you to disconnect the fuel lines on these Subarus quickly and easily. Thank you so much for checking out the video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section. If you like the video, please go ahead and give it a like. I'm Luke, this is a Subaru only show. See you next video, guys. Thanks. Okay, we're making great progress on this GC8 build, but before we go any further, I want to stop and talk about organizing all the parts that we're moving and all the hardware we're removing. That's an important part of a good build is staying organized. I get one of these nut and bolt organizers. Find one that has lots of little compartments. I like the ones that have two sides, so you get twice the storage. And then as your build progresses and you start pulling more and more bolts and nuts off your engine, you add that to your organizer box in the order that you remove those nuts and bolts so you have some kind of idea of the sequence that the hardware came out in. And you add a little tag about where that bolt or nut came from. What I use are these neon index cards. I cut these into little squares, and on those squares, I write down where that nut and bolt came from. 
It makes the assembly process really quick, really efficient, and really easy.